New York didn't do that, bro. That's what's even crazier about this being in Michigan. When you're the Democratic Attorney General of the Democratic state of Michigan, which is run by a Democrat that is relatively popular, a state that is comprised of a ton of Muslims and Arabs, okay? <laughs> Now, let's get to another glaringly obvious hypocrisy in the way that Muslims and Palestinians are viewed by all of our institutions and how easy it is and how expected it is that you can just simply lie about a Muslim woman, a Palestinian woman, even if they are a Democratic Party politician, a congresswoman. Michigan Attorney General falsely calls Representative Rashida Tlaib an in the spring, anti-Israel activists took over part of the main thoroughfare at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. Take a listen. It's scary. It's terrifying. They have a sign that says, long live the Antifada. Yeah, it's so scary that I'm wearing my dog tag, my IDF dog tag on campus. Maybe it's not so scary. Anytime I see that, I'm like, bro, listen, listen, dog, listen. To me, that is worse than wearing a Hamas headband. I know that is not the same in the way that it's analyzed by American society, but that is precisely what it is, okay? The star of David and IDF dog tag? Yeah, dude, because I'm a insane that I'm looking at this star of David and calling it a dog tag and not the IDF dog tag that's in front of the star of David. Maybe I just know more than you, okay? Have you ever considered that? Have you ever factored that into your equation before jumping to conclusions like trying to immediately bait some kind of like perceived out of me? That's a goddamn swastika he's wearing on his chest, that IDF dog tag, okay? Not the Star of David. I'm so scared. What this little broccoli haired is doing in this, uh, this Zoomer cut, broccoli cut dip is doing here, okay, is 100% no different than if he had a swastika, all right? You got the same haircut? I know, shut up. On God, bruh. On God, for real. There's a big problem on these college campuses. On God. He's so scared, bro. Look at him. Look at how scared he is, bro. For real. I can feel the fear in his eyes, dude. Look, I'm telling you right now, straight up, this is ironically something that the media also escalated in 2016. You would have that are straight up Nazis be like, I have no diversity of opinion on college campuses. And the media would literally elevate them to prominence all the time, all the goddamn time. And it was so frustrating. Okay. Yeah. He's so scared he's standing right by the encampment, rocking the goddamn IDF dog tag, too. Terrified. I mean, terrified. They used to do this all the goddamn time in 2016. Nazis would do this. They'd be like, oh, well, I just have different opinions. What are those different opinions? That uh, black people shouldn't go to the same school as white people. That was a different opinion you had, okay? And people were obviously understandably bullying you for it. Same goes for this, okay? If you're... Such a gross that you're rocking an IDF dog tag on college campus. And people go, hey, man, that's kind of up. You're a little bit of a piece of shit, aren't you? And they go, whoa, are you saying that because I'm a Jew? Well, then you're an asshole, okay? Goofy. Oh, man, what's happening here? I can't believe it. And that's just, you know, a call back from the second Intifada and, and not a comfortable feeling. When I woke up this morning, I went to walk. Oh, my comfort. My comfort in my Michigan college campus is significantly more important than the fundamental principle behind the First Amendment right to, you know, free protest. If you're hurting my comfies, if you're hurting my fifis, you shouldn't be able to protest America's unimaginable loyalty to the death and destruction that Israel is doing in Gaza. You can't protest that. It's hurting my feelings. No! Walk to class. It was the first time this semester I had to walk around the diag. Now the protest. Oh, no, you had to walk around to go to class. No, dude, man. Yo, we should extra Palestinian children for that one. No, I wanted to run around. I wanted to run around. And then when I was going to class, I had to walk around the encampment. And they were saying that it, what Israel is doing is, and it hurt my feelings because I do think Israel is doing it, but I like it. It's really messed up. They kept saying, they kept saying that uh, my IDF dog tag was uh, was was me uh, firmly being committed to bloodshed, which is true.
It's got more heated at different times throughout the year. And right now, 11 participants. Yeah, ethnic intimidation, results of a police officer, uh, assault of a police officer, resisting arrest, misdemeanor trespass, destruction of personal property, and disturbing the peace. It's okay. And the Michigan Attorney General can suck my okay her for literally prosecuting student protesters. Dumbass. In the protests, some of them students, some of them not are being prosecuted. Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel's office alleges among the committed during the 30-day takeover of the school are, quote, uh, are ethnic intimidation and assault of a police officer, resisting arrest, misdemeanor trespass, destruction of personal property, and disturbing the peace. Now, when those charges were announced a few days ago, Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan said that the charges were, quote, fri frivolous. Even New York didn't do that, bro. That's what's even crazier about this being in Michigan. When you're the Democratic Attorney General of the Democratic State of Michigan, which is run by a Democrat that is relatively popular, a state that is comprised of a ton of Muslims and Arabs, okay? Like, you taking this position is insane, okay? This happens in, in Texas. You're like, okay, it's still up. It's still, you know, unimaginably cruel and, and uh, glaringly obvious hypocrisy. But, like, it's Texas. You know what I mean? It's wild, and I do believe it's a political statement for her to capitulate to pressure. And a, quote, shameful attack on students' rights. And then Congresswoman Tlaib said, quote, it seems that the attorney general decided if the issue was Palestine, she was going to... Imagine if black people were embraced like this every time we said we were attacked. Yeah, the difference is, like, black people are actually uh, attacked and intimidated, and also institutions do defend that process. And institutions actually churn out that process, okay? It is very different than the way it festers in society and what that person is using as, like, an attack. What that person is talking about does not even correspond to the historic precedent, okay? In terms of, this isn't to say it does not exist. I'm not saying that at all. Of course it does. But that's not how it manifests. Like, black people aren't complaining. <laughs> this is, that's why it's... More similar to like a straight up Nazi being like, or a straight up conservative being like, oh, they're attacking Christians. They're attacking me because I'm a Christian male, you know? Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Your position as a Zionist is literally adopted by the American State Department. It is straight up the current position. That's why the pro Israel protests were hilarious. It's like, what are you protesting? More dead children? Like, they're going to give that for you. They're going to give that to you no matter what. Even if you protest, if you don't protest, it's going to happen. Okay? It is already the status quo. That's why it's so laughable when people try to be like, yeah, it's a really brave position to come out and be in support of Israel on mainstream media. Like, wow, dude. Thank you for your brave and bold take. What's next? Saying that you're pro-American military? Another bold take, huh? Treated differently. And that alone speaks volumes about possible biases within the agency she runs, unquote. Now, that comment left some in Michigan, including Attorney General Nessel, with the impression that Congresswoman Tlaib was accusing Nessel, who is Jewish, with letting her religion affect her decision to prosecute, especially given the bipartisan vote in Congress last November to censure Congresswoman Tlaib for her comments about Israel. That's part of the context here. We asked Congresswoman Tlaib to come on the show today to clarify. She did not respond to our request. We asked her office to clarify what bias does Nestle have or her office, and they did not give us an answer. Yeah, by the way, they didn't do that because you lied. And today you were forced to basically do a subtle apology, which Dana Bash also gave a clarification on. Dana Bash yesterday, everywhere it comes from both ends of the political spectrum, and Rashida Tlaib participated in this. Dana Bash today. Clarification on a story we brought you yesterday concerning Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib's comments attacking a decision by Michigan Attorney General. For the record, for the record, ain't nobody read the goddamn interview. I did. Okay. Another, another apology came here. Well, not even an apology because these people are not uh, people with any dignity. Okay. So, of course, they're not apologizing. One, Governor Whitman, when your attorney general prosecutes people for law harassing Jews and attacking police officers, it's in the interest of public safety. When a congresswoman accuses the attorney general of prosecuting protests simply because she's Jewish, it's bias. Saying you want to make sure that the students are safe on our campuses is just words. If you are not willing to use your bully public to speak out unequivocally on and support holding people accountable for the law when it affects Jews. So, as you already know, Jonathan Greenblatt straight up wants to... Okay, straight up. He wants them unmasked.
He wants them in jail, and he wants them to never be able to speak again. I am not even a little bit exaggerating on this. He straight up has openly been like, you have to unmask them. You have to unmask them. And as the leader of the Apartheid Defense League, he has been able to get away with a lot of his wishes. He gets a ton of media time. He goes on MSNBC all the time. He goes on CNN all the time. He is seen as the foremost authority on it. And what he does with that level of authority and influence is simply defend Israel. Okay? That's why you rarely ever hear about him chirping about right-wing anti- uh, right wing. Sometimes he'll talk about it only to basically maintain a shred of legitimacy as though he does care about it, but he'll never do that if someone is a pro Zionist. Okay. You will never hear, you will never hear Jonathan Greenblatt on someone with the same severity. If you are, on the other hand, a Jew, he has all the smoke for you. Okay. If you're a Jew, you need to go to jail. You need to go to jail yesterday. If you die in jail, I do not care. That's his perspective. He has so much more anger and resentment towards Jews as the head of the ADL than he does for Israel defenders. Okay? Just understand that. Dana Nessel to bring charges against pro-Palestinian protesters at the University of Michigan. Tlaib accused Nessel of, quote, biases. Here's Tlaib's full quote to the Detroit Metro Times. It seems that the Attorney General decided if the issue was Palestine, she was going to treat it differently. And that alone speaks volumes about possible. It's so funny that they refuse to uh, like show the full context even now, even in their clarification. Okay? She, like, even this is not the full quote. Okay? It is so goddamn sickening that the media is doing this in any other circumstance, if this level of slander was being done to a prominent white man in the Republican Party, there is a media infrastructure that would pounce on CNN. This would be wall-to-wall -wall coverage on Fox News, okay? Straight up. But when you're Palestinian, nobody defends you. When you're Arab, nobody defends you. When you're Muslim, nobody defends you. The Democratic Party won't defend you. And the institutions that are supposed to correctly and accurately report on the truth will drop the ball and not even drop the ball, but like deliberately lie about you. This has happened time and time again. Okay. This happened with Ilhan Omar quite a bit. And it happened with uh, Keith Ellison. It happened with, and it happened with Rashida Tlaib in the past. And it's happening with her again. <sighs> I mean, yeah, he still glazed Donald Trump while giving tepid criticisms, tepid condemnation of Trump's remarks. Because Trump is, at the end of the day, very good for Israel. And Jonathan Greenblatt cares about that more than anything else, okay? He does not care about it. And this is not an accusation that I'm launching against someone without any evidence whatsoever, okay? Straight up, time and time again, Jonathan Greenblatt and the ADL has proven that their name is the Apartheid Defense League. Okay, not the Anti-Defamation League, but the Apartheid Defense League. The former president of ADL has even said as much, by the way, not just like, you know, and that guy wasn't exactly nice e either. ...biases within the agency she runs. Now, Tlaib did not reference Nestle's Jewish identity. Her office has not responded to our request for clarity. Her allies insist that's not what she meant. But Nestle still says she believes it is... And repeated on CNN yesterday that quote. Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I, I know. I know. I know. If you ever, if you ever criticize a person and then you later find out that they're Jewish, you're okay. Straight up, <laughs> you know, God forbid. <laughs> oh no. Like it don't matter. It don't matter what the actions are. You can never call for someone's bias in this situation. Because God forbid, oh my God, you find out that they're Jewish after? Oh, dude, well, I guess you've done it. Get the f*** out of here, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is some Jews are tired ass. I know. Except in the aftermath of October 7 and the 12 months of that took place, I thought that maybe people would move towards a more moderate position on these issues. And it turns out, nope, everyone in, in, in media, in prominent roles, have basically taken the free parking uh, scares me position now. Since I posted below, Governor Whitmer has made clear such biases, suggestions of biases are wrong, and we thank her for her comments. Additionally, I learned that initial news reports contain an error in the specifics of the Congresswoman's remarks. Her full comment and its implications are detailed in the story. 
Why are you going to JewishInsider.com and not the actual article? The JewishInsider.com article literally is the article that started this falsehood. The JewishInsider.com uh, article actually quietly changed the wording in the article itself in an effort not to get hit with an obvious, uh, with obvious litigation. Yeah. Answer. But Attorney General Nessel, let's get to the heart of this. You called Congress. Like under any other circumstance, under any other circumstance, this is like a ridiculous story. It is such an overt instance of, of slander being propagated by these uh, outlets that are supposed to maintain a shred of impartiality, maintain an interest in like what the truth is. But it's such an obvious instance of slander and nothing will be done about it. Nothing. No real apologies being issued at all. Congresswoman Tlaib's reaction to your office's charges and her allegation that you and your office have bias. You said that was why? Well, you know, look, for her to say that I could handle a litany of other cases and that was fine, but when it comes to anything involving pro-Palestinian protesters, I could not be fair. I could not be objective. And I don't think you have to be Angela Lansbury to figure this out, right? Um, clearly, she's referencing my religion as to why she... Why? Why would she be referencing that? Why? Another glaringly obvious instance of like horrific, horrific, horrific Islamophobia was launched against Rashida Tlaib. I mean, she's been, she's been a victim of this since October 7 and far before October 7, but especially so since October 7, when a prominent Jewish activist was stabbed to death and, and the media literally shamelessly went to incredible lengths to say Rashida Tlaib actually liked that this person was stabbed to death, okay? It was her friend. This Jewish woman was a community leader, was a uh, anti-Israel demonstrator, and also on top of that, a friend of Rashida Tlaib's. And they just made it up and lied. Barstool's Dave Porkboy went so far as to double down on his speculations. It is ridiculous, dude. It is insane that you can get away with as long as you're saying that about an Arab woman, a Muslim woman, okay? They wouldn't even let her grieve the death of her friend without making the story about her with false smears that she must have enjoyed the and was somehow responsible for it because she's Palestinian and the victim is Jewish. Here's Dana Nessel all the way back in November. Rashid Tlaib, I've supported you and defended you countless times. Even when you have said the indefensible, because I believe you to be a good person whose heart was in the right place, but this is so hurtful to so many. Please retract this cruel and hateful remark. The cruel and hateful remark was, by the way, from the river to the sea is an aspirational call for freedom, human rights, and peaceful coexistence, not death, destruction, or hate. My work and advocacy is always centered in justice and dignity for all people, no matter faith or ethnicity. A statement she was censured for, by the way. Please retract this cruel and hateful remark. When we look at it with today's lens, it probably makes it a little bit funnier, don't you think? Because back in November, I'm sure that there were plenty of people who also personally agreed with this rhetoric. Tensions were high. You didn't understand the full depth of Israel's cruelty. You did not, you did not understand the humanity of the Palestinians due to all the social conditioning surrounding the subject matter. Now, almost a year after those remarks, you probably are way more understanding of Rashida Tlaib's position and probably laugh at Dana Nessel's position back then. This is why From the River to the Sea was my red line in many instances. A red line that was a bridge too far for many. A bridge too far for many in this community and in edge communities as well. But the reason why I stood by Rashida Tlaib and was resilient in defending these statements is because I understand where they come from. I understand the historic context in which these statements began, and I understand what it looks like when you cave and capitulate to false framing that actually ascribes a falsehood to the statement. A call for emancipation is not a call for death and destruction, just because those who want to defend that death and destruction claim it's scary for them, okay? Sometimes when I say something, and you don't understand, sometimes when I say something and you don't personally understand why I'm saying those things, just give it some time, okay? You'll be back. History will end up vindicating me, and hopefully you will also understand. 
What? Why would you have the people to be? Oh, yeah. In the 60s, if you said black power, this was the reaction. I know. I know. I mean, look no further than a couple years prior when people said black lives matter, white supremacists got in their feelings about that, too. They desperately tried to work and, and mar the reputation and tarnish it and claim that that meant that you wanted white people. And they came up with their own slogan, all lives matter, as a counter to black lives matter. But the ultimate goal there was to basically stop all protests. And the same principle holds for pro-Palestinian movements. The goal is to stop you from saying the truth. The goal is to stop you from saying that Palestinians are worthy of emancipation, that Palestinians are worthy of dignity. Palestinians are, uh, should, be, should live free, free of the apartheid, free of the... That's what they're angry about. They'll attack the optics, but at the heart of the matter is the problem. The problem that Palestinians should not be seen as worthy of dignity. Their, their humanity should never be recognized because if you do, then all of a sudden, Israel's actions become quite unconscionable. And that's devastating to the Zionist, ethno-nationalist, supremacist project. Major media outlets and the head of the ADL amplified a fabricated and dangerous lie about Rashida Tlaib. Not only that, they did it after another outlet targeted her with a caricature. Anti-Palestinian bias is real. This is case in point. No one should be treated this way. She thinks I can't be fair. She also mischaracterized the charges, uh, and I think quite, in, you know, intentionally. I mean, she talked about this being peaceful protesters. No peaceful protesters were charged in this event. Um, and, you know, Rashida's a, a lawyer. She had every opportunity to call me to ask to see the evidence in this case, but she didn't do that. You know, I, I have to rely on the facts, the law, and the evidence when I go into a court of law. And that's what we evaluated in this case. And that's the only thing that we evaluated in terms of making a determination as to these charges. I should note that I misspoke yesterday when asking a follow-up of Governor Whitmer, who I asked about this. I was trying to characterize your views of Tlaib's comments. What do you make of those today, noting that uh, Congresswoman Tlaib never explicitly said that your bias was because of your religion, and so it's unfair for you to make that allegation? Well, a couple of things. First of all, in 2022, when my uh, opponent uh, accused me of being a, a groomer and a pedophile, everyone understood that those were homophobic remarks because I, I happen to be gay, right? I didn't have to explain it to people. Um, Rashida Tlaib is an individual who is well known for making um, inflammatory, uh, inflammatory and incendiary remarks that are in nature. So this isn't the first time um, that we would have heard these words out of her mouth. I think it's very clear to everybody exactly what she was saying. But I, I have to say this, you know, it is my job to keep communities and campuses around the state of Michigan safe. And that is exactly what we're doing. I understand that the Congresswoman has very strong feelings about what's happening in the Middle East. So many people do here in the state of Michigan. Um, but, you know, that doesn't excuse behavior and the, the answer to what's happening in the Middle East clearly is not to have chaos and anarchy and lawlessness uh, on our college campuses in a way that jeopardizes the safety of students. It's my understanding that the University of Michigan is not displeased with charges being brought against people who were, were not peaceful protesters. The university uh, has not commented to me anyway, one way or another. Um, these cases were submitted to my office and we did a fair and impartial and extensive review. Um, and again, this evidence will be presented in a court of law. But I don't think it's helpful to anyone to have the congresswoman commenting on the, you know, the merit of these cases when she's not familiar with the facts or the evidence. As a black guy, I can't help but be cynical over how much airtime mainstream media has been so eager to spend for centering white victims in their coverage of like the most ethnic Jewish person I've Seen saying they were a victim on TV has been light-skinned Italian. I mean, a lot of the uh, a lot of the pro-Israeli sentiment does come from people in positions of pri uh, people in positions of privilege. Like, let's be real, that's where it comes from. No, I mean that that is what it is. It's like that's why it is packaged in an identical capacity to. It is packaged in an identical capacity to all this um, all this commotion that the media absolutely elevated in. Um, in the in the campus free speech protests 
which were oftentimes conducted by straight up neo Nazis. Same as a black person, I don't understand it. I mean, you should understand it as a black person. It's because the the calls of bigotry are being conducted by those with privilege. And that's the only reason why I get so much goddamn airtime. That's what it is. Like the positions that these people have, the position that these people have are literally a point of uh, a point of privilege. Like they're claiming that a reiteration of the American State Department's position on Israel is actually somehow a brave one, is actually somehow putting them in harm's way. It's like saying, oh, they're attacking me because I'm pro-cop. Like, that's not a real thing, man. What the f*** are you talking about? Suck my <laughs> What are you saying? What the f*** are you saying? Oh, man, they're attacking me because I said the American military is 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 good do you see what i'm saying it is no different it does not matter it does not matter whether you are jewish or not jewish if your position is pro-israel okay if you are repeating pro-israel perspectives and pro-israel positions and you try to claim that you are being attacked for said positions and that uh, there is some victimhood to be extracted out of you being pro-Israel, you are a delusional loser. It is a laughable, laughable notion that you would incur any penalties whatsoever for being pro-Israel. It is ridiculous. The inverse of that, however, is very true. It is the most normal thing to incur penalties for being anti-Israel. You are branded as an instantly. Hassan looking slick today, Gucci's commie cousin. What does that even mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I liked this tweet when I saw it, yeah. The fact that Tapper, Greenblatt, and others can engage in a multi-day defamation campaign against Rashida Tlaib by blatantly misquoting her and face zero repercussions for it is a great example of the institutional anti-Palestinian bias she called out in the first place, which is correct. Do you think CNN will ever apologize for this coverage? Yeah, dude, when pigs fly, okay? When pigs catch flight, CNN will apologize for smearing a, a, a Palestinian woman. Like, <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. It's like, it's like demanding, it's like demanding CNN apologize for, I don't know, defending the police or something like what? They're never going to do that. Did you ever talk about Marcellus Williams? No, never.